Hello everybody, I'm in the Little Wood, also known as Martin, and welcome back to Cubeball. So today, we're not going on an epic adventure, I'm actually going to show you something, which is probably the first when it comes to modding the game in any kind of way. So you've probably seen that there's a couple of multiplayer servers where you can have more than four players. I mean, the most I've seen, I think, is about 60-ish people on a server. Uh, and there's also servers where, you know, you can have a command firing, so you'll get a thousand levels in three seconds, or something insane like that. But today, I actually want to show you something that actually regards anything and everything that you see attack collect break anything like that whether it's a tree whether it's yourself whether it's a monster whether it's you know water whether it's plants absolutely anything inside of this game can actually be altered and it's really really cool it's actually opened up the first creative doorway that we have for uh, for cube world which is really really exciting so first thing I want to show you actually so there's been a lot of stuff that has been discovered uh, via this method of actually editing things um, which are either unadded to the game yet, unconfirmed, or they actually were worked on in the past and then scrapped and they'll never see the light of day. And one of them is an airship, and the airship is incredibly cool. I've actually bound it to my glider. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump up onto this cliff up here. I'm going to jump off it, and then I'm going to show you the uh, the airship, and it's not been added into the game yet. I don't think there's been any confirmation or any kind of rejection yet as to whether this is going to be in the game or not. It could be used for fast travel maybe, or maybe just as an upgrade to the glider. But look at this beauty. So good. So pretty much you can change anything you'd like. You can change individual blocks. You can change their colour. You can change where they are. Uh, the only th things that you seem to have a restriction on is the scale of that particular item. But literally, renaming this airship, which is obviously significantly larger than the glider, I just renamed this file to glider.cub, and then it actually did the rest of the work for me, which was pretty cool. So if you want to do anything like this, I'm going to show you how to do it. And if you've never done anything like this before, modding, it is super simple for Cubo. So I wouldn't about it give it a go and if it doesn't work you can just re-download the game via the launcher and it will actually update your database files back to the original one so you know no pain no gain it's it's totally cool so download the two links that are in the description you're going to have an assets browser and you're also going to have the cube world uh, editor now what you want to do is you want to fire up the asset browser and all you have to do is simply find your cube world folder within program files or wherever you you know wherever you decided to put it and you're presented by a couple of database files now you choose the first one and then you have a huge list of names then of files that you want to alter so that could be anything from dwarf head m1 which stands for male one you can change dwarf body you could go for i don't know you could even get the plane runner if you got the desert runner or you could change a wand or an iron sword absolutely anything like that choose which one of those you want to do right click it click extract and just save it into the same folder so what I did was I extracted both of those programs into the same folder they both run independently there's no need for installations or anything extract it to there now you want to move over to your cube world thing and this is where we're going to start editing and here we are welcome everybody to the cube world model editor so now the next step click file click open and I'm actually going to start editing the undead head female number three and this is the head so the controls are pretty simple uh, basic ones to learn to begin with is left click is to place a block right click is to remove it and obviously you can remove any of the existing ones that are already here so that's pretty cool uh, other than that you've got your middle mouse button if you want to rotate this around in 360 degrees and then there are a couple of different kinds of modes that you can use so if you hold down Q and then actually draw it will actually do what is known as spam mode which will actually just do a load of blocks quite randomly so if you want a more like you know crazy and random style to it this is usually quite good for getting different kinds of hairstyles because if some people aren't particularly good at pixel art like myself uh, you can use that as a, a way of texturing the hair which is pretty cool and you can also do the same for the eraser as well so if you hold down the right click with the spam it will also do the same thing in reverse which is pretty cool uh, other than that you've got the different kinds of paint brushes which is just essentially just changing the color so you can either add in the hue saturation and luminosity or you can do the classic RGB to do the red, green, and blue. Um, and you can essentially then decide to draw onto the canvas. Now you'll notice that I have got the undead head here. And I actually have quite a lot of room to work with. So you'll find that with some of them. More so like things like torsos and swords and stuff like that. They'll actually be limited to the amount of voxels that they can have in the area. So sometimes they'll be 4 deep and 20 high. Something like that which is pretty cool. Another cool thing to mention is if you want to actually do a colour selection. You can hold down the C button. And if I click on the green block and then click here I will get the exact same color
colours and obviously to remove them right click again and that is pretty much all there is to it there's not really much in the way of tutorials that I can do for this other than then showing you how to implement them into the game so if I was to take this undead female head I think it's number three if I just edit it so we, we can see the edit that's been made uh, I will go for this I'll just do a little square on its forehead I think that would be the best thing for me to do now all we have to do is go to file and save as you probably best if you save it as the same name if you're wanting to replace the undead head free for females then call it the name of the file that you initially extracted so really most of the times you'll just overwrite the file that you already had now all we got to do is reload keyboard asset browser click on edit click on insert and then you actually just find the name of the file double click it and that's it it's inserted into the database initially I thought maybe you had to select it on the list and then choose edit and insert to overwrite it but I found that if you just do it anyway as long as you've got data one selected as your database and obviously not data two three or four which actually contain different things like you know all the different pixel art that actually happens when you're fighting so all of the particle effects you know they're all in separate things but that is all you have to do now let's go back to cube world and here we are back in cube world welcome back everybody i hope your thing was good let's find out if it actually works now it's best obviously initially to do something like a skin or a head or even just a basic sword so like an iron sword a normal one so if i go into start game i'm going to create a character and i'm just going to show you some of the weird stuff that i've been doing so first off we probably want to check out the undead that we were working on earlier on uh now <laughs> this is something that i should explain this is this looks so disproportionate it's unreal essentially what i did was i started off with my minecraft skin in the exact same dimensions and the exact same pixel amounts and then I found that it was a bit too small so I added a neck and then I textured the hair this was kind of like my tester essentially and you can see as well I, just out the back it's sort of hidden by the weapon but if I change his class you might be able to see it a bit better but yeah you can see how I've actually got the headband coming off as well and it all sort of hangs in space so that was like my initial testing one now I did actually do another one for my in the little wood character where I actually edited the entire of the uh of the character which is pretty cool other than the feet I can't seem to work out which CUB file is for the feet but I wanted to have my sandals so again <laughs> the weird head and I've also got uh, have you noticed it's a sapling shirt on I've got my blue trousers on as well which are slightly sagging down to the side the shirt sort of overhanging uh, and then I did a better head which was this one so I took the sort of default one, I think this was number 5 actually, Dwarf Head number 5, and I did a load of hair on him, I kept the ears the same, the nose and the mouth are pretty much the same, and I just overlaid the hair, the headband, and also the metallic piece of my headband as well. And I think it turned out quite well actually, I was pretty chuffed with it. Obviously things like uh, all the other classes minus the Dwarf have much larger torsos, so you've got a lot more area to work with if you want to, but it's all down to preference, um, so yes, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Now if I go to our un dead change that to a female so we've got these ones here if I just go for a hairstyle that won't cover up our face and I go across the face number for three and there it is We've got our cool little voxels on there. Now, something to mention is I'm pretty sure that this is only client side. So you'll be able to see this, but not everybody else will be able to. Unless you actually trade CUB files and stuff like that. If you're doing like a Let's Play, maybe. And you want everyone to look a specific way, then that is how you would do that. I actually edited the haircut as well. Haircut number one. Um, I actually removed all of the pixels. So that there would actually be no beard overlapping on the face. And actually mentioning that, I should show you how hairstyles work when you're editing them with the keyboard editor so let's do that and for the final time welcome back to the keyboard model editor so really quickly I'm going to run you through this uh, each hairstyle is actually developed based on one singular head so obviously the head styles change and the face styles change uh, but as a default all of them are generally the same size so here I'm going to run through some of the colors the red is essentially the skin color of your character the blue part is the iris so obviously the colored part of the eye and the green part is actually the white part of your eye now the reason that isn't white is because the hair basically works on a scale from white to black so if I were to take this color here by doing C and click now if I were to change it to maybe like a more gray color if I were to edit down the center here and make this part of the hair gray instead then when we actually get inside of the game it will give us that streak so it automatically actually takes like say blonde for example and we'll put a darker shade on different parts of the hair so I'm basically going to do a mohawk and I'm going to run it all the way through the middle and then we'll go straight back into cube world we will look at males uh, the human males and go for the hairstyle number one and you can see how this hair uh, hairstyle actually works um, and yeah that's pretty much all there is to it that was just the final little thing most things like items 
and everything don't run on this system, but hairstyles, you can actually have them shade for you quite easily, which is nice. So I'm going to save this, I'm going to reinsert it into the game, and I'll see you in a sec. And for the final time, welcome back everybody to Cube World. So, if we just quickly turn our character around, you can already see it from behind actually. But we actually have that streak that we were aiming for, which is pretty cool. So that is essentially the result of it. And if you want to send me some of yours, I'd love to do maybe like a weekly show. Where I show off, show off some of the cooler schematics and sort of fan-made ones. There have been some absolutely fantastic ones so far. Uh, people that are fans of Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank. I've seen people editing like the giant fishes in the ocean biomes actually into Magikarp. And I think I might actually have a little side project uh, to try and do the Pokemon. So I might do a little competition uh, and get you featured in a future episode if I do any more on these. If you've got any more questions, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. I'll answer as many as possible. Uh, and obviously I can scan through some FAQs and post them on my subreddit as well. And I will see you all in a little bit.